So this is the Behringer TD3SR, a clone of the Roland DB303 baseline synthesizer. Now Behringer has been on a rampage lately with its clones of classic analog hardware synths, but you may wonder why the DB303, since there are plenty of existing clones available in the market that have faithfully recreated the original Roland bass machine. Well, one major reason I see for this is the price point. True to Behringer's legacy, this DD303 is extremely affordable and easily the cheapest clone in the market. Looking at the hardware, it's all plastic, very light. Connectivity is pretty good. There's a single mono quarter inch output, MIDI in, out, through on 5 pin DINs, a USB MIDI, not for audio, but just for MIDI capabilities. The unit does not run on batteries, it needs a power adapter. Alright, let's now take a look at the synthesis engine. It's fairly straightforward, a single oscillator synthesis engine and all the synthesis parameters are over here. To the right over here, you get a distortion unit that can be engaged into the signal path. This wasn't there in the original DB303. And then in the bottom here is the sequencer engine. Now the sequencer is probably the most complicated part of this device. So you get sequencer tracks and patterns. Let's take a look at patterns. I'll go to play mode here. And now here we get four patterns, one, two, three, and four. It's a bit confusing because there are two switches for one over here, but they both will engage as pattern one. So let's pick pattern four here. So we're in pattern number four, and now we have eight buttons here that could trigger any of the eight stored patterns. So you can see this first one is blinking, so if I hit play here, we hear that first pattern. Let's try another one. And now we're hearing this pattern. So you get eight of these patterns in one pattern group, but within each pattern, we have two sections, section A and section B. Each section will have its own pattern, so now pattern B sounds different. So in each pattern group, we get eight individual patterns, then in each pattern we get two sections, section A and section B. Now in terms of real-time control over the patterns, you can tap and hold here and then tap on any of these 12 buttons to transpose the pattern. So that's an octave above, and that's back to the original octave. Alright, let's now talk about the synthesis engine. This is a simple aspect of the synth. You get two waveforms. You can switch between a square or a sawtooth. There's an overall tuning control here. It doesn't snap to the center, so you're going to have to set this by ear. Very much like an analog synthesizer. Then we have the filter cutoff. This is a low pass resonant filter. And of course, this is the resonance control. At maximum resonance, you get that classic squelch. With the resonance low, you will get a better bass response. There's this envelope dial. Now, even with the envelope is all the way down, there is still some envelope modulation happening. But when I crank this up, you will hear the envelope modulate the filter cutoff, especially when I bring the cutoff down. I'll switch to square here for a second. There's a DK control for the envelope. You don't get an attack control as the attack is fixed at a very fast value. So with the DK control, you can make each individual note very nice and snappy, or much longer. There's an accent amount control here, which relates to the sequencer, so if there are individual steps that have accent enabled, those steps will be louder and brighter. Switching back to the sawtooth. Now we don't have any wave shaping capabilities here, no pulse width control. There is a tempo control for the sequencer over here with this style. You can sync other devices to this machine and vice versa. Alright, now let's take a look at the distortion section. And as I mentioned, this is unique to the TD3. I'm just going to open up the sound a little bit. 
now let's engage the distortion there's a level control if it's all the way down the sound is completely muted so i'll bring the level up there's a distortion which is set to the lowest now there's a tone control when it's set in the center it's kind of the original tone bringing it lower will make the sound more bass heavy and higher will make it more treble heavy and of course there's a distortion control and finally there's this big master volume control so this is a sound that you wouldn't be able to get with the original Roland DB303 because that did not have the distortion A lot cleaner with the distortion off. Let's talk about the connectivity here. Headphone out, gate out, CV out, sync in, and an input to route through the internal filter and distortion. So basically you can swap out the internal waveform with some external signal and route that through the filter and distortion unit. All right, now let's talk about the step sequencer. It is a bit complicated, but let's see how it works. So I'm gonna switch here to write mode so I can now write patterns. Let's start with this pattern number one. I wanna clear it out first. So I'll tap and hold here and tap that first pattern. Now when I start the pattern, we hear nothing because it's cleaned out. Now there are two elements we need to consider while creating patterns. The actual pitches of the different steps and then the timing for each of those steps. Let's do the pitch first. We can have up to 16 notes per pattern. So I'm gonna to go to pitch mode, so it's active right now. And now I can just enter in notes. So let's say those are the notes I wanna work with. Let's get out of pitch mode. Go back to normal mode. Now if I try to play this, nothing's gonna happen because we haven't defined the timing of those notes. So to do that, we need to tap over here. So now we have the option of defining a 16th note, a tied note, or a rest. I'll tap this first button here to define a 16th note. And if I keep tapping it, I'm defining a 16th note for all those steps. Once I run out of 16 steps, we're out of this time mode and we're back to normal mode. And now, if I play the pattern, there's our pattern. Okay, so that wasn't too difficult, but let's say you do not want to have 16 steps. I can reduce the number of steps by tapping and holding here and tapping as many steps as I want. So I've tapped seven times here. Now if I play, okay, we hear nothing because we've lost the timing of those steps. So let's go ahead and define the timing. Let's say I want them all to be 16 notes, so I'll just tap seven times. And now we hear the seven step pattern. Now we can also modify the individual notes of the pattern. Aside from the original octave, we have an octave above as well as an octave below. So let's go back to pitch mode and adjust those things. We can step through the pattern by tapping here. So that's the first note there. That's the second one. Let's say I want this an octave below, so I'll tap this button here. The next one I want an octave above, so I'll tap this button. I want to put an accent on this note, so I'll tap this third button here. And for this note, let's say I want to slide in, so I'm going to tap this button here. Accent, octave down, and that's it. Let's hear this. You can hear the accent, that's pretty loud, I'll bring it down a bit. Now you don't get to control the slide time, it's just fixed. 
though you will hear it more obviously when there is a wider gap between the two notes that are being slided. Alright, let's further mess with the timing of these notes. So let's go back to time mode here. As I mentioned before, we can have a regular 16th note, a tied note, or a rest. So let's play with this. So I want a note, I want a tie, then have a rest, note, note, tie, rest, and we're done. That's the pattern. Now while the pattern is playing, if I hit this clear button, we get this metronome-like sound. And we can use that as a reference to tap in the rhythm that we want. I'm going to slow down the tempo so it'll be easier for me to tap this in. So I'm going to tap this button here. And now we have a different rhythm based on my tapping. Alright, so let's go through this process one more time. I'm going to clear out the pattern. I'm going to first define the number of steps I want by holding down this button and then tapping over here. If you tap more than 16 times, you're not going to get more than 16 steps. It's just going to max out at 16. Next, let's define the pitch for each step. So I'm just going to tap in different notes over here. Now one confusing thing here is that you don't get to know if you're done with the 16 steps. So you just have to get out of pitch mode and test it out to find out if you got the right notes. Let's go ahead and define the time for each of those steps. Here it will stop once you max out 16. And now let's play this. Alright, now I want to limit the number of notes. So I'm going to tap and hold here and tap 8 times here to have just 8 steps in my sequence. Now of course if I try to play this, I've lost the timing, so I'll have to go back to time mode and tap in the timing again. Now we can play it. Now I have some mistakes in the notes, so I'll go back to pitch mode and step through the different notes. So that's the wrong note. I'll tap here to define the new note. And I guess I'm done with the sequence. So let's get out of pitch mode. Try this. I still have another mistake. So go back in, step through the different notes. Yeah, it's this last one here. I need it to be an E instead. All right, let's hear it one more time. There we go. Does that sound Probably sounds familiar. Let's go back to play mode so I can transpose the pattern. Okay, so that's not what I wanted to do. I just moved to another pattern. So I'm just going to go back to that first pattern. Now to transpose, I'll hold down pitch mode and tap the note I want to transpose to. Now it's working. So that's the step sequencer on the TD3. It works almost identical to the original Roland TB303. One difference being is on the Behringer one, there's a way to create a random pattern. And of course also use a software editor. I hope you enjoyed this quick review on the Behringer TD3SR. I'm going to be doing a comparison video between this and the Cyclone Analogic TT303 bass part, so stay tuned for that.